So something important to realize is whenever we have charges in close proximity, we have a system with energy in the form of electrical potential energy. So because we have a system with these two charges, we have a system that has energy in the form of electrical potential energy. So how do we determine exactly how much energy we have in the form of electrical potential energy in the system? Well, to determine that, we use this simple equation. The electrical potential energy of a system equals Coulomb's constant multiplied by the magnitude of charge 1 multiplied by the magnitude of charge 2 divided by R, which just represents the distance between the center of charge 1 and the center of charge 2. This distance, that's what R is. And you might wonder, why isn't this a D? Well, really, you can just focus on one charge. Think of a radius. So, but again, the point is R is distance. But as long as you know these, these, these metrics, you can just plug it in this formula and determine the amount of energy in the form of electrical potential energy in the system. So let's plug in our numbers. We know K is Coulomb's constant. That's just a constant. It's 9 times 10 to the 9 if we're using SI units. And this I just recommend you memorize. So that's just Coulomb's constant. We said Q1 was 1 Coulombs. So Q1 was 1 Coulombs. We said Q2 was 2 Coulombs. So that's two coulombs. And let's say they're two meters away from each other. So we know the distance, the r, is two meters. So now we just plug it in our formula, we multiply them, we cancel our units, and we'll be left with nine times 10 to the nine joules of energy. So now we know if we have this system, we have nine times 10 to the nine joules of energy in the form of electrical potential energy. And those are the only things you need to know, the magnitude of the charges and the distance between them. So now we know we have a system with nine times 10 to the nine joules of electrical potential energy. But what does that mean and, and where does this number come from? Well, the way I like to think about it is let's imagine we had these two, the original two charges. Let's say we originally had these two charges infinitely far away from each other. So I don't have an infinite an amount of space, but let's just assume that they're infinitely far away from each other or just really far away. Let's just say they're really far away from each other. If we had this original system, how can we go to this system, this system where we had this amount of energy in the form of electrical potential energy? How do we go from here to here? Well, we know we would have to move this positive charge in this direction. We would have to move it so then it would be this distance away from this charge, and now we have our system. But how do we do that? Because realize, these are like charges. These are both positive charges, so they repel. They repel each other, so they don't want to go near each other. So how can we take this charge and move it nearby so, it, so it's, we said, two meters away from, from each other? How do we do that? Well, we need to exert an outside force. We know this guy doesn't want to go in this direction, so we need to force it. We need to apply a force in this direction. So we would need to apply an outside force, and we would need to apply that force for this distance. But once we apply that, we apply that force in this direction, it didn't want to go. So we exerted an outside force. We moved it. We applied that force over this distance, a very large distance. Then eventually we would get to our system with, with, with our energy. But realize whenever we're doing a force over distance, we're doing work. We're doing work. So therefore, when we initially had these very far away from each other, in order to move in nearby, we have to do work. We need to do some work on this charge. We need to apply a force over distance. Exactly how much work do we need to exert on this charge to move it? So now they're two meters away from each other. Nine times 10 to the nine joules of work. And that's why once we do that work on this charge, now we have this system. Now we have a system that has energy in the form of electrical potential energy. How much energy does the system have with these two charges this distance? 9 times 10 to 9 joules of electrical potential energy. And the way I like to think about it is this system has energy. It has stored energy. And we have this much stored energy. And really, whenever we have stored energy, we have stored force. We have a stored force that we could unleash. For example, if we were to let the system go, what would happen? They would naturally repel each other. They would naturally repel and start moving, accelerating in the opposite directions. Why are they moving and accelerating the opposite directions? Because they're feeling forces. We've learned about this in Coulomb's Law. So we know we have. if we were to let this go, it would naturally unleash a force. It could naturally unleash a force over a distance. So it could naturally do work. It could do some work. How much work can the system do? 9 times 10 to the 9 joules of, of work. So now let's do another example. 
Let's say we have this original system. We know whenever we have charges in close proximity, we have a system with energy in the form of electrical potential energy. So if we have this system, how much energy do we have in the form of electrical potential energy? Well, we know we use our simple formula. Coulomb's constant multiplied by the magnitude of charge one, multiplied by the magnitude of charge two, divided by the distance between the center of these two charges. Now we plug in our numbers. Again, Coulomb's constant, that's constant. We said Q1 was one Coulomb's. We said Q2 was negative two Coulomb's. And again, let's say they're two meters away. So now we just plug in our values and now we get, again, you can't ignore that sign. We had a negative two Coulombs. So now we plug in our values. Now we get negative nine times 10 to the nine joules of energy in the form of electrical potential energy. So now we know our system, our system has negative nine times 10 to the nine joules of energy in the form of electrical potential energy. But, but what does that mean? What does that mean if this system has negative Energy, what does that even mean? Well, in this context, energy is relative. It's relative. So, so we have relatively negative 9 times 10 to the 9 joules of electrical potential energy. But relative to what? Well, again, let's do that thought experiment where we have these two charges infinitely far away from each other. Or let's just say they're really far away from each other. So if we have this original system, what's going to happen? Well, we know they attract. We have unlike charges, so they're going to attract. So they're naturally going to unleash a force. It's na they're naturally, they're going to move towards each other. They're going to attract and move towards each other. Why are they accelerating towards each other? Because they're feeling forces. So naturally, this guy's going to naturally unleash a force. So, so let's say it unleashes that force. It unleashes that force over a certain distance. Now, now we're nearby. Now we're close to each other. But realize what's going on. Originally, with this original system, we had a lot of force over a large distance we could unleash. So therefore there was a lot of potential work that we could we could do. There we could we we would naturally unleash a force and look at this entire distance we could unleash that force over. However, in this situation, once we're nearby, now again, we can unleash a force, but now we can only unleash a force over this distance. So in this situation, we could naturally unleash a force over a large distance. So there was a lot of work we could potentially do. This system had a lot of energy and there was, it was, there was a lot of work it could potentially do. But in this system, there's less work it can potentially do. Again, it can still unleash a force over a distance, but there's less. There's this much less distance and force, essentially this much less work that can be done. So therefore, let's say this system had a certain amount of energy, stored energy. This system has less stored energy because there's less work it can do. It lost this amount of work. Originally, this system had a lot of force over a large distance. So there was a lot of work it could do. But once we get to this situation, when they're two meters away from each other, we lost some of that, some of that potential work that could have been done. So therefore, that how much work did we potentially lose? Negative nine times 10 to nine joules of, of work. So this this system had a certain amount of energy. This system had less stored energy. How much? Negative nine times 10 to nine joules less of stored energy. So energy is relative. And this system can do relatively, this system can do a lot of work. This system can relatively do less work. There's less stored energy. So there's less stored work it can do, less stored force and less work it can do. And again, how much? This amount, that's the difference in energy.